You ever wonder, where am I in life? You get into that midlife crisis mindset even though you're still relatively young. You start comparing your life to others. You start wondering what is it you really value in this limited existence of ours. Maybe you need something, just anything, that might give you some perspective as to who you are and where you are in life. Thankfully, Friedrich Nietzsche's idea of the three metamorphoses might help you out. By the way, and I mean no offense, but how are you doing today? Welcome back to Amygdala Vids, the channel banned in 17 different countries. Subscribing may not help change that, but it would help my self-esteem. Also, stick with me to the end of the video because I got a special surprise for you guys. Anyways, as stated earlier, we're going over the three metamorphoses of the spirit from Nietzsche's book, Thus Spoke Zarathustra. Now this section starts off right away by just listing these different stages of growth. I name you three metamorphoses of the spirit. How the spirit shall become a camel, and the camel a lion, and the lion at last a child. So for the purposes of this video, it might be helpful to think of this as a self-examination. Let's all humble ourselves and start out as mere ordinary spirits. And as we go through each stage of the metamorphosis, see where you fall. And if you don't fall anywhere at all, it's all good. We could just chill in the normal spirit zone. But Nietzsche implies becoming the child is better than the other, so, you know, I'll let you work that out for yourself. Anyway, let's start our discussion with our first stage, the camel. Now before we get all philosophical, let's just think for a moment, what comes to mind when you think of a camel? Now don't get all scientific on me telling me some facts about it, just think about what it represents. I think about its back and how it's almost designed to have something up there, be it either a human or something else. It's like it was meant to carry a bunch of weight. Now getting back to philosophy, if we are the camel, what are our weights? Our weights are, for lack of a better word, values that have been given to us from the outside. It's the thou shalts that we get from life. Thou shalt work hard. Thou shalt become a Christian. Thou shalt obey this. Thou shalt obey that. And the camel just takes this all on, not in a whiny, hesitant way, but with acceptance. What is the heaviest thing, you heroes? So asks the weight-bearing spirit, that I may take it upon me and rejoice in my strength. Now how does this differ from the starting spirit? Well, it's a little complicated and not very explicit, but from what I understand, the spirit is more of a passive character. Just worried about going with the flow and not really concerned with value in general. The starting spirit is like a really boring date where you ask them about themselves and they just say something like, I don't know. The camel, by contrast, at least has values that come from the outside. And in my previous examples, I might have made it sound kind of negative, but really these values can be good. Like the value of hard work. But in the end, the values are not created, they are given. What then happens when one disagrees with those values and says no? So after the camel, one becomes a lion. The weight-bearing spirit takes upon itself all these heaviest things, like a camel hurrying laden into the desert. Thus it hurries into its desert. But in the loneliest desert, the second metamorphosis occurs. The spirit here becomes a lion. It wants to capture freedom and be lord in its own desert. But as lions, what is it we're fighting? Because Nietzsche chose this battle-ready cat, not some loser animal like a possum. So I mean, we gotta be probably fighting something. Well, we are. Nietzsche wants us to imagine this great dragon. It's big, it's shiny. Not like Ord from Dragon Tales or that yellow dragon. I think his name was Pretzel or something. And this dragon, it's all shiny. And upon close inspection, we see why that is. Values of a thousand years glitter on the scales, and thus speaks the mightiest of all dragons. All the values of things glitter on me. All the values have already been created, and all created values are in me. Truly there shall be no more I will, thus speaks the dragon. So this great dragon is the representation of thou shalt, which the camel gladly accepts, but as lions, we just aren't having that. We aren't some little bitch lion like baby Simba, nah, we're Mufasa. As lions, we say no to these values. To create new values, even the lion is incapable of that. But, to create itself freedom for new creation, that the might of the lion can do. To create freedom for itself and a sacred no, even to duty. The lion is needed for that, my brothers. To me, the lion represents defiance. It goes against. But in order to be against something, you need to have that thing present in the first place. So in a sense, the lion is dependent on the dragon of thou shalt, to even be a phase because the lion is the sacred no. And when we say no, we're usually responding to something. 
But what about situations where you don't just say, okay, I'll take it, like the camel, and you don't just say no, like the lion? I mean, these are both responses to a thing, but what if we want to be the creators of that thing in the first place? Well, that leads us to the last phase, the child. So what is a child? No, no, I don't want a birds and the bees talk. I mean, what does a child represent? It represents creation, a beginning, curiosity, and play. The child is innocence and forgetfulness, a new beginning, a sport, a self-propelling wheel, a first motion, a sacred yes. Yes, a sacred yes is needed, my brothers, for the sport of creation. The spirit now wills its own will. The spirit sundered from the world now wins its own world. So unlike the camel which takes on the values of others, or the lion that says no to the values of others, the child creates its own values, or it wills its own will. It shows a deep respect for yourself as a human individual. Now just to bring it all home, I want to offer a possibly very dumb analogy to help drive the points home. I want you to think about yourself in a group of friends. Now the camel in the friend group just says yes to whatever suggested with eager acceptance. Oh, you guys want to go bowling? Okay. Mini golf? I'm down. Oh, you're all subscribing to Amygdala Vids? Count me in. The lion, on the other hand, just says no, but doesn't offer up an alternative. Hey guys, you wanna go get some food at Red Robin? Nah, I don't want burgers. What about Taco Bell? Nah, I don't want constipation. Dairy Queen? Does it look like I've given up on life? The child, on the other hand, is the one creating, or in this analogy, making the ideas. It's the friend that says, hey, I'm going to the movies, wanna come with? So hopefully that analogy helped rather than hurt, but now comes the big question, where do you fit in this whole mess? Do you think we should strive to even become the child? Leave your thoughts below. That's gonna do it for this video, thank you so much for watching till the end. As promised, here's your surprise. It's Nietzsche in The Simpsons. Well, I don't know if he's in The Simpsons, but I just found this thing online. If you enjoyed the video, don't just subscribe once, but subscribe, then unsubscribe, then subscribe again, double subscribe. Also hit the like button and bell to stay updated for new videos. And as always, I wish you all a beautiful rest of your day.